Well, good morning, good morning. I am Reverend Karen Einhaus. It is my joy to be here with you this morning. And I am reminded of that wonderful saying that we say so often. There is the talk um, that we think we're going to give, and then that is the talk that we're actually going to give. And then there's a talk that people hear us giving. And then there's the fourth talk, and that is the talk that people say they heard to somebody else. <laughs> and the reason why I'm really glad to be reminded of that this morning is because I don't quite know about the first two of those talks, you know? However, what I know and what I trust explicitly is that if there is an opening within you, if there's a desire to hear, you will get something out of it. And that is what I'm leaning into. That is what I'm leaning into. I had, a, I had an interesting week. I had a dental surgery on Monday and spent a couple of days in that fog of uh, coming out of an anesthesia. Does, can anybody relate to that? I see some hands knocking. So I feel like I have a really good excuse. So <laughs> that's what we're going with today. However, I have prepared some things that I'm very excited to share with you today. And um, it is this idea of having a conversation about why spiritual community? Why do we gather on Sunday mornings? Why do we do, we as being the new vision center, why are we gathering all through the week while we're coming together to lead this organization? And how can we provide benefits that go way beyond this Sunday morning one hour, even beyond the classes that we talk, that um, teach, uh, the, the workshops that we gather for, the events that we host here. What is it? What is really the benefit of spiritual community? And if we have 100 people, 120 people in the sanctuary and maybe another 80, 50, 80 people online, I imagine that the answer that you give to that question is different from everyone else. Because you see, while the New Vision Center is a very important part of that, the most important component in that question is the person that is sitting in your chair. It's the person that is showing up. It's the person that is feeling called without perhaps knowing exactly why am I being called to participate here. At least that was my experience. When I found the New Vision Center about 15 years ago now, I didn't really know that I was looking for what I found here. I didn't, I didn't spend much time really thinking about why am I seeking out a community. I can tell you that the blessing that I have received from this organization, from the beloveds that have been here, part of the New Vision Center, from the beloveds who are presently part of this living organism is going way, 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 way beyond what I could have ever imagined. And so today, we are going to take a little bit of a breezer 
We're going to take a little bit of a breather and really become present to that important part in this relationship that is you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and also the you that is me, right? Because each of us will experience this gathering here, the words that I say, differently. I think about it often when we talk about our spiritual mind treatment, you know, our form of affirmative prayer, that five step uh, process that we teach in all the classes that you hear from the platform, that we, that, that's one of the pillars of our teaching, right? And we hear this so often, there are five steps and the first step is recognition. It's the recognition that God is all there is. Now, right there, right in that step, what is the most important part in that? Is it the power for good in the universe that is everywhere present, that is known by so many names and yes, and yet it remains nameless? Perhaps, but I propose that it's really the person that is recognizing it. So I invite you to put your hand on your heart and breathe in and experience with me that whichever, whatever we look out of to, whatever we look out to, really has to come through us. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see some people nodding. So while we, and I invite you to come back into this space, while we really teach people on how to recognize and what words we use and how we focus on it, it really depends on where we are on our own spiritual journey. And that makes this idea of um, walking alongside with someone interesting. Because we walk alongside individuals who are fully there, right? We, we walk alongside as, as a community with individuals who know without a question in their mind that there is an infinite power for good in the universe greater than I am and we can use it. I've been in moments in my life where I had no question about that. And this community also walks alongside beloveds who have been shaken to their knees for something that happened in their individual lives, in their perhaps family life, in their greater community, in this nation, a global issue that has brought them to their knees. And they're questioning that that is really the truth. So how then do you walk alongside each beloved? I can already tell this is going to be a lot more talk with questions than with answers. And isn't that the way life often is? Because which answer is going to be more meaningful to you? The one you connect with. The one you hear yourself say. Here we are at the beginning of April. If you watch this at some future time, we are at the beginning of April in 2023. And we have had a full first quarter here at the New Vision Center. We have talked about some very, very deep and important things. 
Our annual theme, um, as you probably know, is Every Path Leads Home. And the first two months, we have focused on um, our, I have it written right here. There it is. Embracing our spiritual truth. That is ha what we have been doing for three months. Embracing our spiritual truth. And you might remember some of the topics that we had while we were really feeling into who, who is this person that is looking out through my eyes? Who is this individual truly? And we have explored things like putting down our masks, being willing to be vulnerable to being seen. We have had topics like faith is a choice. It's something that we have to go ahead and claim and work on and effort to experience it. Power, power, peace, poise, and power was another one. And then last week, we talked about boundaries. I have never heard so many people tell me that no is a complete sentence. <laughs> and after last week's message. Thank you. I am so glad I don't have teenagers at home. Can you imagine? <laughs> no, mother, no is a complete sentence. <laughs> so, how do we hold all of this? How, how do we bring benefits to this experience? I've been thinking about it this week, and I think what I want to do is really stand firmly into what it is at the New Vision Center that this teaching that we believe, and then I would like to engage in a little activity, if you're willing, um, that we can all do right here together. How does that sound? Good? Okay, good. I'm glad nobody said no. <laughs> so here's a quote from Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder. We know there's a power far greater than we are. There's a love that casts out fear and a faith that overcomes all obstructions. We must permit ourselves through affirmative thinking to enter into this power and this love with complete confidence. With complete confidence. Yes. Yes. What role can the New Vision Center play? When we find ourselves in a part in our lives where we don't feel that complete confidence, where we are not fully assured that that power that is greater than we are is available for us, when we are stra struggling with, with whatever we are struggling with, That is where I think our classes and our workshops come in, and even Sunday mornings. I believe that one can join the New Vision Center and walk this path alongside the New Vision Center and really never be truly deeply touched by what is happening here. Yes, it feels good, but to have a transformation to allow the vision that we have here to reveal the power of love, to truly transform our lives, we have to bring something to the table. We, as each one of us, we have to bring something to the table. I just read a study from, um, from the Mayo Clinic 
They did a study on the benefits of community, the benefits of um, that feeling of belonging, and their study was geared towards what is the crucial element to experience belonging. And we are a small enough crowd here. I think I'm going to pose the question to each one of you. What do you think is the crucial element to experience belonging? I hear acceptance. I hear trust. Vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Number one crucial element, effort. Effort. The effort to want to belong, the effort to step in, the effort to show up, removing the masks, the effort to reach out to another. I've never seen you be here before, or I'm new here. Can you tell me something about this place? Isn't that interesting? Number one, it's the effort. Now, the, um, the little exercise that I said I wanted to do with all of you, it is a little bit about this effort. Because here we are talking about these paths that we are offering, and there has to be a willingness, a conscious decision on your part to say, I want to go on this journey. And so the journey is very, very different for every one of you. In your keep me sheet, if you're here in the sanctuary, and if you raise a hand and let us know if you don't have a keep me sheet, we'll, we'll make sure you get it. And then online, I know we have a link prepared to send it to you. And there is this, oh, I think we even have a slide of it. This is, this is how it looks. It looks like a path. And so here is the invitation. And this is one of those things I really invite you and urge you to actually do it. Take a moment and ask yourself, where am I right now? We had that wonderful talk by Reverend Leslie that in order to move forward, we got to make sure we know where we are. So take a moment and ask yourself, what is up in my life right now? Perhaps there's something glaring at you, um, a new relationship or a relationship that came to a close, a new job opportunity or job opportunity that's coming to a close, relationship with money, something happened. It doesn't matter. What's important is to choose just one thing. We often get into this thing, oh, I have so many things going on. And then we don't give ourselves the opportunity to really go deep. So here is where I am. This is what's happening. This is what I'm feeling right now. And then I invite you to look into the future. Where do I want to be? If I'm currently experiencing perhaps a crisis of faith or a financial crisis or I am really concerned about what's happening in the world or I feel so alone or I feel whatever it is, Take a look into the future. What is it that you want to experience? Where do you want to be? And then as we start walking the path, we can ask ourselves, what is missing for me? What's missing in this relationship right now? What is missing in my relationship to the divine right now? And then there's that little sidestep, right? Where we can ask ourselves, where might I find it? 
And here is where I invite you to be very open-minded, because sometimes the answer might surprise you. I see people writing, lovely. Yes. You see, we can, especially in this day and age where there is so much that is offered in form of entertainment or in form of, I call it, um, for self-care, you know, ways for us to even get pulled away from those questions that are deeply, deeply causing us to feel into what is important for me. and to give ourselves the time to answer that. I heard somebody say that we have a tendency to spend more time planning a vacation than planning our lives. Oh, a couple people heard that too. That's great. <laughs> yes. This is the invitation to spend time with this to know that there is an answer, that you are the only one that can arrive at that answer. And then there is a plethora of support to help you, to support you, to walk alongside to get there. This idea that we, I, I am the most important part in this creation of my life. As I am co-creating with the divine, I have to be clear what it is that I am, who I am, what is my part? Because the divine is always, always there. It is always awaken, awaiting us. And so there's this quote by Angela's Arian. There comes a time in the spiritual journey when you start making choices from a very different place. And if a choice lines up so that it supports truth, health, happiness, wisdom, and love, it is the right choice. It is the right choice. This feeling tone that is present here, this deep knowingness that all is truly well, that we can allow ourselves to rest with so much self-compassion and love of the self. I found this articulated so beautifully in this short story that I want to close with. It is just everyday life. And it is Ernie. Ernie who shared this moment of diminishment and the grace it opens. And Ernie in this book talks about how as things are falling away, it becomes a little bit more challenging to find grace in whatever we are left with. He says, this morning I again walked up the eight flights of stairs. Yes, our elevator is out. After taking the dogs for our morning sojourn. As each day goes by, it's getting harder for our older dog, Riley, who's close to 14, to make the climb, which each floor I pause and sit with the younger, Kipper, he's seven, and we wait. Riley looks up from the bottom of the stairs. Kipper lays down, rests his head, and looks down at his older brother. Slowly, Riley elegantly brings himself up the stairs. And when he reaches the top, Kipper raises his head, they look, touch, 
stand together, and we begin again. And isn't this what this spiritual journey invites us to? To sometimes be the one that waits, and sometimes be the one that is being waited for so that we all may walk alongside each other in peace, in love, in grace. Thank you. And now we do what, what we do so well. I invite all the practitioners, the practitioners in training, the beloveds who are feeling called and have extra to give, to hold, hold this space together with me as we hold this beloved community and each individual in it, as we recognize this power that is greater than we are. As we just allow ourselves to breathe and be breathed by the divine, as we recognize there's truly nothing we have to do but to open our hearts, to open our minds, to be, to be, to be one, one in the one. And we recognize that as our breath finds its own natural rhythm, we are experiencing all the goodness of life. We recognize that we have access to peace at the center of our being, to love, to harmony, to joy, to possibility, regardless of what is happening outside of us. And so we give ourselves into this inner sanctuary. We give ourselves this time we recognize that all is truly well. And we can lean into this peace, into the grace that is right where we are. And I invite into this space all of the prayer requests that have been given to the New Vision Center via our online prayers in the prayer box, all of the prayers that are in our hearts. How grateful I am to know that there is a space that receives, that hears, that witnesses, that appreciates that loves. And so it is with a grateful heart that I simply let this be. Know that it is done, it is complete. So I place it into universal law. And together we anchor this truth as we say, and so it is.